Good evening. It's great to see you here in worship, uh, the first of our five Lenten series together. Uh, there are four sites where five preachers will be circulating a word through Lent, and it all comes to this theme uh, that Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, brings us, which is idolatry from rebellion to redemption. This is the theme that goes uh, all the way through uh, Isaiah, it's the theme that goes all the way through Scripture, and we thought, well, this is going to set us up very nicely for Good Friday and Easter. And so uh, we're, Isaiah will be our preacher, and hopefully the preachers who come will uh, uh, represent Isaiah well as well. So great to have you here. Uh, great to be a part of a, a, the collegiality of pastors where we can uh, dream together about how this may uh, benefit the congregation, uh, bring the gospel in a unique way, possibly, and so, and we get to turn to hold an evening prayer again as well. So this is this is also fun, uh, neat tradition. The music uh, sets the tone for worship, and so uh, we are turning to that. And thank you for Kim and her wonderful help uh, during certain parts, um, especially the round part. So you'll be following her. Uh, are there any announcements we should be made aware of? Otherwise, we're going to head right into it. And so uh, whenever your part uh, is up, Kim's going to be the all with you. So if you're not with Kim, then you're not with it. So get with Kim, and you'll be with it. All right? Sound good? All right. They'll be with it. They'll be with it. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> and let Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here. And so we sing joyous light. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing. Creation story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our song to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms our weary soul, Love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice. Let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. 
it is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From all you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. And we all sing, let my prayers rise up. together. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. O God, I call to you, come to me now. Oh, hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Keep watch within me, God. Deep in my heart may the light of your love be burning bright. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. All praise to the God of all, creator of life. All praise be to Christ and the spirit of love. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. And at this point I'll turn to our lesson for tonight. I invite you to stand for the reading of our lesson from Isaiah. Each uh, preacher has chosen a text from Isaiah. There's 60-some chapters, and so uh, we did a little study on our own and decided, well, I'm going to come at it from this angle, uh, all under that theme. But uh, So now my uh, chosen text from Isaiah 45, verses 20 through 23. Notice the... uh, the, re- the rebellion to redemption sort of language, even in these uh, few verses. Assemble yourselves and come together. Draw near, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge. Those who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save, declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told you this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. 
By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, and you may be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So, uh, here we are, Isaiah. You'll get uh, five weeks of Isaiah, each preacher coming at it, as I said, from their angle, from their chosen verses. But it's important to get a little bit of an overview, and I don't know how much overlap, but Judy said, my wife said, hearing the same thing twice is probably good anyway. Or five times even better, right? But uh, right away in Isaiah 1, we get uh, what the problem is. It doesn't take long for Isaiah to get right into the problem. It's Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel. There's a northern and southern kingdom. And Judah, the southern kingdom, uh, is fallen into wickedness. Judah is uh, done what is evil in the sight of the Lord. Just listen to the very first verses of the first chapter of Isaiah. Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, Isaiah continues. People laden with iniquity, offspring who do evil, children who deal corruptly, who have forsaken the Lord, who have despised the Holy One of Israel, who are utterly estranged. Quite a way to start out the first few verses of Isaiah, we're getting right at the heart of it right away. They've rebelled against the very God who created them through the promise of Abraham. And in other words, they have not not listened to God. They have forsaken his words and his promise. And so uh, in chapter 6, we get this call of Isaiah. Some of this might be familiar to you. In in chapter 6, Isaiah has this vision of the Lord in his temple and the seraphs on each side, these uh, holy angels in charge of the throne of God. And one of the seraphs now flies down to the altar, uh, uses tongs, picks out a coal from the burning incense at the altar of the Lord and comes and touches the lips of Isaiah. Uh, He he says he's a man of unclean lips. Well, uh, the coal does the uh, changing of the lips uh, and now the words that come from Isaiah are going to be the words from God. And so, here we go. A little different than my ordination, I'd have to say. I don't remember coal and burning lips, but I do remember... Uh, being called by God through his word. Uh, and this, this is Isaiah's call. Um, and then hear, hear what God tells Isaiah to speak to the people. Uh, this is a little different than I can remember my ordination being as well. Then the Lord sends Isaiah to his people with this word. And here's the word. Here's what you're going to say, Isaiah. Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. And Isaiah's kind of going, hmm, that's uh, an interesting uh, way to preach, uh, speak, but they're not going to hear. And uh, so he says, well, how long do I have this call at this particular congregation, dear God? And God says, well, 
until the cities lie waste without inhabitants, uh, till your congregation is no more, uh, the houses without people, the land utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast in the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth remains, it will be burned. And like an oak whose stump remains standing when it's felled, the holy seed is its stump. This is how, um, this is how God says, here you are, Isaiah, there's your sermon. Go preach it. <laughs> but now the very last uh, thing caught my ear and my eye. The holy seed is the stump. Of course, in Isaiah 11, we know that a root, uh, a branch can, will come out of the stump of Jesse. Um, and so again, a reference to Christ here in Isaiah over and over and over. The book of Isaiah was written over a very turbulent time in Israel's history. It was time before this, just before this great uh, and mighty civilization of Babylon came and conquered this kingdom, this southern kingdom of, of Judah, it captured all the leaders of the country. Uh, this would be uh, Daniel, of Daniel and the Lions uh, fame. This would be Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, of the Fiery Furnace story fame. These all taken from uh, Israel and taken back to Babylon. And of course, we understand this as the Babylonian captivity. Uh, this happened uh, in the, I have to figure out how to say this, uh, back, because B.C., it happened in the, the early 500 B.C.s, which would be 587. Um, in 586, all these leaders taken to Babylon and for 50 years are held in captivity in this foreign land of Iraq. And the, um, of course, this is Baghdad. This is this, this area of the Mesopotamia. And so they're in captivity and up until Isaiah's warning, the people are not listening, right? He's speaking, they aren't listening. God knew it. Isaiah knew it. He would keep preaching God's word. They wouldn't hear it. They wouldn't listen. Okay, there's your, uh, there's your job uh, as a preacher, Isaiah. And now, uh, once the captivity happened, um, and this occurs for the, in the first 40 chapters. Now, Isaiah chapter 40 is a whole new preaching. Um, they've heard the warnings of idolatry. They've heard all this and not listened. And now, now that they've been completely de devastated, the temple destroyed, the people taken from their land, um, now chapter 40 is completely different. It starts out with these words, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her as she has served her term. Her penalty is paid. Verse uh, chapter 40. Uh, now the preacher has a different word. And... Um, and I'm sure they wondered at this point, how, how have, have, how are we going to be freed of this captivity? And God chooses, and this is where my chapter comes in, chapter 45, God chooses a very unlikely um, anointed person to free the people from Babylon, and that would be Cyrus, Cyrus of the Assyrians. This is a, uh, a king of the Assyrians. Cyrus is appointed by God to go and conquer Babylon. Of course, Cyrus is the most offensive one they could think of. If anybody were to help them and free them, um, this promise of freedom, it would not be Cyrus. But you see how God uses the offense, the offense of Cyrus to free the Israelites. 
And so Cyrus says, yes, you can go back and you can rebuild your temple and, and all of that. And so chapter 45 um, is, is where Cyrus comes in the picture. And he is seen, as, and Isaiah speaks of Cyrus, how God is using Cyrus to free the people. Um, he is their savior in a sense. And it's an offensive savior, to be sure. He's a heathen king. He's a Gentile, but appointed by God to overthrow. And so it's, uh, we find in Isaiah the very theme, as I said, that God uses with all of his people. God always comes to us with two words, and the first word is always law. It's always commandment. It's always, this is my expectation of you. Uh, this is my covenant, but I know you're going to break it. This is, this is uh, the Ten Commandments. You need to be holy, but I know you will break it. Uh, it's in our DNA to do such. So if Isaiah were here, this very theme of God would be played out, and he would say, uh, you're blowing it, people. He would come in with the law. You're not being faithful to the covenant. You are making your lives uh, entirely about yourselves. You have forgotten me. I gave you the first commandment so you would know that I alone am the God. But you have, And now, using some of the language of Isaiah 45, you've turned to your maker and you said, what are you making, maker? Why have you made me thus, is the, is the words that come out of Isaiah. Uh, the clay is telling the potter, uh, you screwed up when you made us this way. Um, and and uh, you're, you've turned this, this vessel that you're making, God, is, uh, is not good enough. And so this is the language uh, coming out of Isaiah it also says you are infants in the womb and you're turning to your mother and saying, Why are you, what are you laboring for? Why are you having me? This is the kind of absurdity uh, that God uh, receives when people do not listen, do not uh, come to God and God alone as the um, source of all goodness, source of all life. Um, and so this would be our first word from Isaiah, wouldn't it? A word of law, you are blowing it. Uh, you don't want a God. Um, and that's the original sin. And it's in our DNA. It's the sin of Adam in our lives. We, we want a God when he's saying the right things. But when he's saying the other things, we rebel against this God. And, um, and so there's the sin. He, and the preacher, Isaiah, is called to name it and bring it out. But there's always two words. There is this word of mercy. There is a second word, just like Isaiah uh, has said. And the second word is um, comfort, comfort my people. Um, God's almighty word is the second word. It's the word of mercy to the one who is convicted of their sin. Uh, the one who suffers under the experience of the weight of being guilty and shame-filled, not living up perfectly to God's expectations for you. But God knows this. We who are laid low by our expectations and circumstances in life, God will bring this new word, a word of promise, a word of forgiveness. And, of course, you see this played out in Isaiah. You see it given to us in Christ. And this whole um, idea that King Cyrus would be the one to free the people and how offensive that was to the Jews. We see this same thing in the cross, don't we? We see the same offense of the cross, that God would have to die. We kind of think, wouldn't there be a different way? I mean, it seems so horrible, horrific, terrible. 
a terrible way to die. Why would God choose to do this for me? We are offended by this uh, act of God. But he uses the very offense to free us. He uses this very offense of calling us sinner, naming our sin, to free us from sin. By the glory, God's word, the glory in the cross. And so there we get to Isaiah 53, uh, this uh, beautiful text that we will turn to on Good Friday where that mercy was poured out for you. Um, Isaiah knew it so well. There were two words he needed to bring. The people would be convicted of their sin. It would happen. Uh, but in in that moment, uh, they would receive the second word, and that is of mercy. So praise be to God for the mercy of God given to us through his Son, through the cross. The offense of the cross is our very salvation. Amen. Let's, uh, let's go to the sermon song, or the theme hymn, which is Beneath the Cross of Jesus. And uh, that'll be one we sing each week, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her Rejoice, O oh highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, 
the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. Join me. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One. Strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling and proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and blessed the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one, Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Just to pause here before our prayers, uh, just note that any offerings received here, um, East Need Rose and Baltic Food Bank, is that right? Half of it goes to the banquet, half to the food bank. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. And that offering plate's in the back. And offering plates are in the back. Yeah. So with that, uh, thank you for that gift, and let's turn to our prayers. God of mercy, hold us in love. Join me. In peace, in peace, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace and salvation, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace between nations, for peace between peoples. God of mercy, hold us in love. For us who are gathered to worship and praise you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all of your servants who live out your gospel. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all who govern that justice might guide them. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who labor in service to others. God of mercy, hold us in love. 
Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. Of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Grant our great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And dear God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come. come. Your Your will be done done on earth earth as in in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Um, I'll say, let us bless our God. You respond, praise and thanks to you. And then uh, let's all join in the blessing. Would you please stand? Um, Sorry. (laughs) I need my note. (laughs) Final. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you all together. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light in our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. And may the God of all peace sustain you in the the coming week and bless you as you go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.